For many of us engineers out there, Stack Overflow is absolutely a godsend. The prank that they pulled on April 1st, where everybody can only do a certain number of copy-pastes, literally exemplifies it. As engineers, we'll do some coding, run into some bug, oh, Google it, and quite often, literally copy and paste whatever Stack Overflow tells us that the answer is. Now this is great a lot of the time, but it requires a couple things have actually happened. Somebody else ran into this problem, had the confidence and or wherewithal to actually post the question, and then three, somebody else took the time to actually answer it. Now if you're like myself and working in a cutting edge technological industry like blockchain, you'll find out this doesn't always quite happen. Sometimes when I run into an issue, I think I'm the first one to have run into that bug or into that issue. You don't want to know. So I'm the first one. And when that happens, we do need somebody to take that first step to ask that question because then that problem becomes more discoverable for the entire community and then we can all benefit by actually Googling it and finding it later. But somebody does need to take that first step. Now, when it comes to Stack Overflow and other forums, this can actually be quite daunting to make this first ask. Take a listen to what Forrest Knight has actually said about the same thing. I came across a question where someone was just trying to get a better understanding of microservices and one person had the audacity to start off their answer with you should do more research about microservices. That's what he's doing. Stack Overflow is full of idiots. <laughs> However, instead of idiots, I would say jerks. Now let's go back to 2013 when I was just starting out on my computer science programming journey. Uh, I still actually didn't even know how to type and I was using Hunt and Peck because I was a backwards troglodyte. Anyways, I'm doing this project in C in my computer science course and I run into this issue. I really have no idea what's going on and I still don't really know what's going on in C. Well, my buddy goes, yeah, man, you should try Stack Overflow. You can ask questions there. Ah, okay, here's my new question. A few moments later. You stupid ass! Oh, oh, I can't you put this in. Now the comments were a little bit more innocuous than this and I didn't get thousands of downvotes. But I did get a lot of unhelpful comments like this doesn't belong here and that was it. Now, after getting all these unhelpful comments and all these downvotes, I didn't actually end up getting the answer to what I was originally looking for. So I said, this, deleted my account, removed my question, and moved on with my life. I turned the project in, I somehow got a 75 on it, whatever. I still don't know what exactly happened because I've never looked back at C since. I was already struggling a lot with computer science and I kind of said, hmm, okay, if this is how it is, maybe this isn't for me. Now, granted, we can all agree on what a punk ass attitude that is, and I'm glad I kept trying and I'm much better at software engineering now. However, though, this does highlight my main issue with Stack Overflow and, and not just Stack Overflow, but really any intelligent industry in general, you know, like computer science, biology, doctorates, you know, etc. This concept of elitism and what I am coining as knowledge shaming. I think there could be a massive ego in the software engineering realm and to an extent also the cryptocurrency realm. And this can be incredibly daunting and I think this is a hundred percent an issue that needs to be fixed because it is preventing new people from entering these industries and building up all the protocols and all the things that we're building up and we want to be built up. When I was younger and I would ask a question, anytime somebody would respond with, you need to do your own research, I used to think, oh, okay, maybe, maybe I'm an idiot. Maybe I didn't do something here. But now I'm mature enough to know that asking questions is an incredibly important part of the research process. And, and if somebody just blanket responds with, you need to do your own research, I now think either A, they have no idea what they're actually talking about and no idea anything about the topic. So they hide behind this facade of them getting pissed off and angry. Or B, they're really just commenting to stroke their own ego. They don't actually want to help anybody and they're just commenting to make themselves feel good about themselves. Yes, there's going to be a lot of material out there that's going to be really helpful, but syncing with somebody is going to help you a lot along the way. And if you shut down that avenue, you are going to shut down a massive growth opportunity for yourself. Now back to Stack Overflow. When we're looking at questions and we're looking at answers, I think we really need to think about the hero's journey. I, I, I mean, developer's journey. A comment like this doesn't belong here and a whole bunch of downvotes without any explanation doesn't actually lead me to where I can go. It leads me to this wall where my developer journey has stopped. I've gone down an avenue looking for help and I've gotten a blank wall and even negative feedback saying, turn around, you're going about this the wrong way. Something much more helpful would be some, a comment saying, hey, here's why your question is not good or could you please modify your question to be like X, Y, or Z? Why is, why is my question bad? What's going on? My developer journey has ended. I reached out for help. I've reached a dead end. This feels bad. Now this lack of knowledge shaming and lack of elitism can greatly help on the answering front. But 
The story actually doesn't even end there. I've started using Stack Overflow in the Stack Exchanges more and more, and been starting to give back a lot. Sometimes I'll go through new questions and add comments, and obviously I add answers. Something about my open source duty pulling me to do this stuff, I don't know. And I think through doing this, I've actually seen a lot of helpful people in the community answering questions thoughtfully, giving constructive feedback, you know, whether it's, hey, can you please modify your question and, or et cetera. However, I also see questioners that take advantage of that. Obviously, a question like this isn't helpful at all. Stack Overflow is living documentation and asking questions that are so specific that they're only gonna pertain to you and have these real low quality questions where you know, no effort is done to make the answerer's job easier really muddies up the site and uh, reduces the Stack Overflow's usefulness overall. Sometimes people will make these questions, put zero effort in them, just paste their code, ask a question that's really generic and make it really hard for the answerers. So even the questioners really need to think about all the other community members and all the other developers' journeys. They need to phrase their questions in a way that make it very discoverable and answerable and find outable by somebody else. These questions on Stack Overflow should really help other people when they come to it. If your question is, my code doesn't work, please fix, that's not gonna help anybody. If I Google, my code doesn't work, please fix, I'm gonna get 10,000 different types of code. I've gone through hundreds of questions that are considered low quality, and instead of downvoting them into the ground, I think the appropriate response is actually to leave a comment to teach them how to be better members of the community, better members of the Stack Overflow community, and better members of the software engineering community at large. Very pointed questions, so not only can they get their answer, but the rest of the community can benefit from that conversation that happened. Some of the best comments can be, can you please do X or Y? Can you please clarify? I'm looking to see what you did here. And then if they don't respond or they refuse or, or whatever, only then can you downvote them into the ground, kick them off the site, et cetera. But they really shouldn't be punished by being told to do your own research. We wanna lift them up so that they, in turn, can lift us up so that they can continue asking questions and uh, helping make discoverable questions and answers that we can later find out. And if they improve our community, that's gonna improve my quality of life a lot because I know that I'm going to run into other questions, I'm going to Google it, and I'm hopefully going to run into a Stack Overflow problem that somebody else has already fixed. Do I think Stack Overflow has a lot of elitist, knowledge-shaming jerks? Yes. Do I think there are a ton of actually very helpful people on the site? Yes. Are there people who abuse the system and try to use it as their personal debugging tool? Yes. Are there people who just don't know how to use it right? Yes. If we just take the few extra seconds to say, could you please add that command that you're using, or could you please copy paste exactly the error you're running into, we can build a network of software engineers who are better for the community and better for everything that we do because they will be more helpful and we, in turn, can rely on them to be the ones to ask questions that we'll end up Googling later. And this would overall make the platform less daunting to people. I think saying Stack Overflow is full of idiots is a gross overstatement. However, I know at times, I thought the same thing. Almost knowledge shaming is one of the quickest ways to shut down a community and make new people feel dumb instead of feeling empowered. I think at the very least, we as a community need to stop the knowledge shaming and be better at educating new and beginner engineers at asking better questions and engaging in a more effective manner. Why didn't it print me a Lambo?